Good afternoon, everyone. Is everybody doing, having a great uh, build conference so far? Awesome, awesome. Um, my name is uh, Krishna Mamidipaka. I'm a principal program manager on the Azure Stream Analytics team. And uh, today, we are here to talk about uh, session BRK3058, from cloud to intelligent edge, driving real-time decisions with Azure Stream Analytics. And uh, I do realize that uh, it is a great uh, big conference. There are lots of other events that are going on simultaneously. But uh, I do thank you uh, for making time to attend this session. And today, I'm going to be joined here by my colleague uh, Jean-Sebastian Brenner uh, from the Stream Analytics team. And then we have a very special uh, customer speaker from Downer Group in Australia, Stuart Trotter, who is a senior IT director there. And together, we hope to bring you a very interesting, informative, and uh, most importantly, a uh, session um, which is probably very actionable for you, something that you can take back into your regular lives and uh, implement uh, some of the learnings from here. So before we go into the agenda, let's just do a quick show of hands in terms of how many here have actually used Stream Analytics in the past? I would say about 35-40% uh, of the room. So. I'm hoping that in the agenda, we have something for everyone, right? So we are going to spend some time talking about the whole concept of real-time analytics. What is really real-time analytics? Then I'm going to go into some of the key concepts of Azure Stream Analytics, and we will do that through some interesting demos. Let's just hope the demos work. <laughs> the next part is I will actually hand it over to Stuart, who is going to talk to you about how is Downer Industries, Downer Group, implementing Azure Stream Analytics in some of their uh, mission-critical scenarios? Then JS will come over and uh, talk to you about how can Stream Analytics be a core part of your big data ecosystems. And he will also talk to you about some of the key announcements that we are making today at this particular event. And uh, we hope to have about five minutes at the end for a Q&A. Earnest request for you is to actually hold off on your questions because we have quite a bit of surface area to cover until the last five minutes. And we promise uh, we will answer each and every question. If not right here on the podium, we will be outside to take all your questions. Is that all right? Excellent. Thank you. So let me just get started talking to you about what is real-time analytics. So I believe the word real-time analytics is fairly used and abused by various different technologies, various different companies. But being a purist, the way I define real-time analytics is really comparing and contrasting it with uh, traditional batch analytics. So in traditional analytics, what happens? You have data. You bring the data. You put it in some kind of table, a database, a worksheet. You write your query. You bring the query to the data. And then you glean insights from the data. But in stream analytics, you actually reverse it. Rather than taking your query to the data, you are bringing your data to the query. Let that just sink in a little bit. Rather than taking your query to the data, you are bringing data to the query. The query is always on and live, on the wire, so to say. And as the data is flowing through the wire, we are trying to identify certain trends and anomalies that the businesses can leverage. Let me give you a very simple example. We've all been to supermarkets. We've all uh, paid at the point of sale terminals. So when you go to a supermarket and then you swipe your credit card, within one or two seconds, you get a response back if that transaction has gone through or not. Do you think the credit card gateway company has all the time in the world to take the transaction, put it in a database somewhere, check it if there is enough balance left on your account, and maybe also run some machine learning algorithms on that transaction to see if it could be a fraudulent transaction. Chances are no. They are probably intercepting that event and doing some analytics on it on the fly so that you get a response back within one or two seconds. And those are really the scenarios where we are seeing more and more adoption of real-time analytics. There are more examples that I'm going to give as we kind of move along. In the last decade or so, we have seen an exponential growth in real-time analytics across various different industries, whether it is remote monitoring, predictive maintenance in the IoT scenarios, remote patient monitoring, remote device calibration in healthcare, uh, remote um, monitoring of the power grid 
in the case of uh, power and utilities. Lots of companies want to ensure that their workers are safety. So the loan worker safety and continuously tracking your assets as they move through the supply chain, those kind of scenarios are some of the key examples of real-time analytics. Also, if you look at financial services, right, fraud detection, um, as well as uh, high-frequency trading, these are all you know, different uh, scenarios where you can actually apply real-time analytics for your business advantage. Having defined and gone through some of these key scenarios where you can apply real-time analytics, let me start talking about Azure Stream Analytics. So Azure Stream Analytics is a fully managed PaaS service on Azure for you to do your real-time analytics and real-time data processing. So what really differentiates Azure Stream Analytics? Why do customers really love Stream Analytics? First and foremost, it really comes to ease of getting started. So two and a half years ago, when we were still on the drawing board, trying to figure out what kind of language head to provide on top of this really powerful real-time analytics engine, we looked around. Whether it was our competitors on the open source side or on the proprietary side, everybody required the customers to use some kind of imperative coding language. But Microsoft always believes in making things as easy as possible to our customers, so we said, Let's make a bold bet. Let's take a bold bet. Let's put a SQL language head on top of this really powerful real-time analytics engine. And fast forward two and a half years, when we look around, our competitors, whether they are coming from the open source side or on the proprietary side, are trying to emulate the success that we've had with this approach. Whether it is uh, Kafka with KSQL, whether it is Spark with Spark SQL, or even uh, other competitors, they are trying to provide a SQL-like language. So we feel pretty good about the bet that we had taken three years ago and kind of lead that we have got in the market. Developer productivity. We integrate with more than 15 services on Azure, and you as customers can integrate with services downstream and upstream from Stream Analytics without writing even a single line of code. Really goes to talk about the time to value and the ROI that you can achieve through using uh, Stream Analytics. Intelligent cloud and edge. Stream Analytics, you can deploy in the cloud or on Azure IoT runtime running on IoT Edge. And our differentiator there is that it is exactly the same language, whether you write it for the cloud or on the edge. And it is very different, again, from the competition, which requires you to write a very different language on the edge versus in the cloud, probably because their technologies evolved through certain acquisitions which are not properly integrated and things like that. We are a fully managed platform as a service. There are no clusters for you to manage. There are no VMs for you to provision. You only pay for the time that your service, your job, is actually running. And we are the cheapest service in the market. We start at 11 cents an hour for the smallest uh, compute and uh, memory footprint. And we are enterprise ready. We have a whole lot of certifications, whether it is ISO, PCI, SOC, HIPAA, so that we cater to all the industries, all the customer segments. And we have a financially backed 99.9% .9 SLA guarantees. And for the time that we are not providing that SLAs, we automatically refund the money back for the time the service was not providing the necessary and guaranteed SLA. So this is how end-to-end uh, -end canonical architecture for stream analytics looks like. We will go into deep, uh, deeper level uh, when JS comes, so, comes and talks to you about uh, some of the key uh, architectures that are possible with stream analytics. But at a very high level, you have devices and applications on the left that are continuously generating the data. We pull the data from event hubs or IoT hubs, depending on the scenario. We provide integration with Azure Machine Learning Service so that you can do real-time scoring using uh, pre-trained machine learning models. And once the data is processed, we can um, store the data uh, in uh, uh, services like Azure Blob Storage, Azure Data Lake, Cosmos DB, SQL DB, SQL Data Warehouse. You can uh, power real-time dashboarding with Power BI. We work very closely with the Power BI team in order to enable dynamic dashboarding experiences there. And I will show you what I mean through some uh, demos very soon. And then a very important part of what happens downstream is once you detect that there was some kind of anomaly in the system that you're monitoring. You want to be able to take some action. Maybe you want to send a SMS message. Maybe you want to send an email. 
Maybe we want, you want to trigger a workflow, maybe create a ServiceNow help desk uh, ticket. So all that is possible through our composable service with uh, services downstream like Azure Functions, Service Bus Topics, and so on. So having talked about the service at a very high level, what I will do now is kind of show a very quick demo. We will start it in a perfect uh, cooking show fashion. We will show the end product working, and then we will try to uh, disassemble it and then figure out how individual components in, that, in this demo have been uh, developed. OK? And um, the scenario here is we will use the public data set that is provided by the New York City taxi cabs, and uh, we will replay it so that it is uh, kind of a mocking a real-time scenario. And then I will show some of the key concepts as we kind of walk through this particular demo. So. Give me a second for the dashboard to load. OK. So what you see in the screen here uh, is the real-time uh, view, a mocked-up real-time view of uh, New York City taxicab data. And this should be a dynamic dashboard. In a little bit, you will see actually the data updating. So let me get you situated on what is it that you are actually seeing here on the dashboard. So the first tile here is showing the number of pickups that are currently happening in different regions of Manhattan. Okay? So I can, as a taxi cab company owner, I can see how many pickups are happening in individual regions in Manhattan. The purpose of this is if I see that there is um, uh, the, the, there is uh, a little bit of uh, fewer pickups that are happening in a particular region, then I can send more cabs into that particular area so that uh, they can uh, balance the demand and supply properly. Here, I'm showing the number of average number of uh, passengers per trip. Here, I'm showing the number of drop-offs that are happening around the Microsoft Store in Times Square in Manhattan. Right? In the last one minute, how many drop-offs happening, have happened within a 50-meter radius of uh, the Microsoft Store in Manhattan? Here, I'm showing the, in seconds, what is uh, average trip duration. And here in this tile, a real-time view of my current pickups versus uh, my historical pickups overall just to compare and contrast how is my business doing as compared to historical average. Another thing that we are showing here is the number of unsafe incidents by driver. And I will come to it how we are doing all of this in just a moment. So by medallion number of the driver, how many unsafe incidents has that driver uh, been a part of? Unsafe incidents could be collisions, or it could be uh, sudden braking, rapid acceleration, all those things. And we will do that through some interesting IoT-based scenarios. All right. Just give me a second. All right. So before I show you the code that actually went into developing these dashboards, let us get uh, grounded into the architecture that is actually powering this demo. So we are getting uh, data from the New York City tax, uh, taxi cab public data set which we are replaying in a way that it appears as if it is real-time data. If we had access to a real-time API, it could very well be real-time data. We also have certain devices that are on each of these taxi gaps that are showing uh, unsafe uh, driving incidents, and we are emulating that through a real Raspberry Pi, which I will show you in just a little bit. So all the data is coming into the cloud through event hubs and IoT hubs. We also have 
data augmentation, right? Stream augmentation that is happening through SQL. So we have different geofences, different parts of Manhattan defined in WKT or well-known text format in uh, SQL, and we are joining that with the real-time data that is flowing through. And then we have historical data that has been processed through Spark systems in the back end in order to compare the current pickup trends with the historical trends. The data is processed by Stream Analytics, and then uh, we are showing the data in Power BI. You can write uh, certain alerts to Azure Functions in order to trigger alerts. And uh, of course, uh, the process data is continuously uh, being uh, uh, pushed out in Parquet, native Parquet format, which is a new announcement that we are doing this week, so that uh, it gets processed and gets fed back into Stream Analytics in order to compare current historical trends with uh, the past. Let me talk about built-in geospatial functions in Azure Stream Analytics. We've been seeing a huge demand, huge growth in the connected car scenario, in ride-sharing scenarios from uh, various different customers, both aut automotive OEMs, ride-sharing companies, et cetera. And in order to make it a lot easier for them to actualize geospatial scenarios, we introduced built-in geospatial functions that you might be familiar exist in the SQL world in Azure Stream Analytics. So using very simple functions, like create point, which helps you define different points or define the location of the assets in a supply chain, you can um, uh, define the geospatial coordinates of these uh, assets. Create polygon helps you define geofences for various different uh, areas that you want to continuously monitor. ST underscore distance helps you measure, monitor distance between multiple assets at any given point of time. Everything happening in real time. ST within helps you determine if a particular asset that you're tracking, is it within a geofence or is it outside a geofence? ST overlaps helps you determine if there is an overlap between multiple geofences or not. So let me show you, using those functions, a very simple query that we had to write in order to build this very informative real-time dashboard showing the uh, fleet management status of my taxi cabs. So I will show you the code using VS Code, Visual Studio Code. So this is an, another announcement that we are making today. Uh, Stream Analytics uh, add-in for Visual Studio Code is available as we speak, so if you are interested, we will send you some, uh, some links and we will point you to the resources where you can go and download and uh, play around with this uh, feature. So in the first part of the query here, all I'm doing is uh, getting the uh, pickup and drop-off um, latitude and uh, longitude information so that I can continuously track where the pickups and drop-offs are happening. In the second part of the query, as I said, ST underscore distance function can be used to calculate distance between any two coordinates at any given point of time. We are continuously monitoring the distance between the drop-off point and a fixed coordinate of Microsoft Store. Right? I know the Microsoft Store in Times Square has a coordinates of uh, 40.7 and 73 minus 73.98. So I'm continuously monitoring the distance of the drop-off from the Microsoft Store. In the third part of my query here, I'm only measuring those drop-offs that have happened within 500 feet of the Microsoft Store. So I'm in effect uh, filtering down the data so that I can only project those uh, drop-offs that are happening within a particular uh, distance of my Microsoft Store. In this particular part of the query, what I'm doing is I do have data in SQL, right? Which I'm using as reference data for stream augmentation. So this has geofence information for different regions in Manhattan. So using WKT format, which is a very uh, frequently used format in the geospatial circles, we were able to define all these different geofences that are representative of different areas in Manhattan and we are joining this information with the drop-off information so that we know exactly how many drop-offs are happening in which parts of uh, Manhattan. In this part of the query here, we are sending in Parquet format this aggregated data into 
Azure Blob, where it is being processed by Spark in a batch mode so that we can compare the historical numbers continuously with the real-time numbers. So we are also announcing today that uh, we have full support, native support for Spark Egress from Azure Stream Analytics. So if here I am configuring an output to Azure Blob Storage, and you, as you can see here, sorry, it is a little light um, because the job is running, but you can now serialize your data natively in Parquet format so that if you are writing data to your Spark subsystems, things can be much more efficient there. So with this investment, we are getting a lot more closer to your big data ecosystems. Okay. So for the next part of the demo, I will move slightly into the IoT side of the world. Like I said, we have certain devices, let's say we have fit in all the uh, uh, fleet of vehicles that the company runs. And the reason for doing that is we want to continuously track the safe driving practices of the drivers and also give them a way to understand and uh, uh, you know, self-correct some of these uh, unsafe incidents that they are probably involving in. So the architecture for this part of the demo is something like this. I have a Raspberry Pi. And on the Raspberry Pi, I have deployed Azure Stream Analytics on IoT Edge runtime so that the Stream Analytics job can work in a completely disconnected or offline mode. Because I cannot guarantee that these taxes are always connected to the internet, but I want this logic to be always executing. So we can, for that reasons, deploy the Stream Analytics job on uh, your devices that are running IoT Edge runtime. We have a sensor that is constantly looking at the accelerometer readings, XYZ coordinates, and I have a C-sharp UDF, user-defined function. You can extend the SQL language that is supported in Stream Analytics with C-sharp UDF. So for example, here, we are using a very complex uh, trigonometric calculation to calculate the tilt from pitch and roll as uh, given by uh, the Raspberry Pi's uh, sensor. So in order to do that, we are making a simple call to a C-sharp user-defined function, which shows the extensibility. The C-sharp uh, UDFs are available both in the cloud and uh, on the edge. They are currently available on the edge, and we are going to make an announcement about the cloud soon. Stream Analytics available in cloud edge, and we are making the announcement this week that we are also a part of the Azure stack that is running uh, Azure IoT Edge Runtime. Another concept that I want to talk to you about is the built-in anomaly detection models that is available in Azure Stream Analytics. So as I said, we have integration with uh, Azure Machine Learning, but uh, customers told us that they probably need uh, some help in order to work with anomalies, um, uh, machine learning models that are much more common uh, among the uh, community. So we work very closely with uh, the Microsoft uh, research and we got uh, models that are now baked into Azure Stream Analytics so that you don't have to invest in a data scientist to develop these machine learning models for real time purposes. Uh, and the whole complexity of uh, def uh, defining, training, and uh, uh, developing your machine learning models is now reduced to a simple uh, function call. So we can uh, uh, identify uh, anomalies like uh, spikes and dips, and also slow increase and slow decrease uh, non-momentary anomalies. Let's say you are monitoring a VM continuously for memory leak. This is not an anomaly that happens suddenly. It slowly creeps upon you. So we can also help you identify anomalies of that nature. And all you need to do is uh, write a simple function signature in order to invoke these uh, machine learning algorithms. The scalar expression uh, is the attribute on which you want to run your anomaly. It, is, it might be a field that is coming directly from your data, or uh, it could be a field that you might have computed as a part of the query. 
confidence level, it actually sets the sensitivity of the model. Higher the confidence level, fewer the anomalies. Uh, lower the confidence level, more the anomalies. History size. Like I said, uh, these, are, um, these are not uh, pre-trained models. These learn and score in line. With history size, you are indicating to the model how many events to learn from before the scoring starts. And partition by, it is a very powerful feature. Let's say using a single query, you are monitoring 1,000 devices. right? So when you add that partition by clause to your query, we will spin up 1,000 different models in memory, and each model uh, monitoring each telemetry stream separately so that you can find that needle in the haystack in a very easy fashion. So with that, let me quickly go to the second part of the demo here. OK. So what you see here is a real-time view of uh, the telemetry that is coming from the Raspberry Pi that is on my desk here. So if I move the Raspberry Pi, you should very so soon see uh, anomaly trigger, both at the device level, as well as you should see the number 13 increment to 14, because it might take a few seconds given the network connectivity. As you can see, the driver gets uh, automatic uh, alert saying that, hey, there is an anomaly. You've been uh, in some kind of uh, awkward driving situation. And the Power BI dashboard, which can also be provided and packaged as a uh, mobile app for the driver, they can continuously see some relevant information, like how many number of uh, trips that they have done in this particular shift, how many unsafe driving incidents have they been involved in, and so on. All right. Um, So you've seen some of the key capabilities that are available in Azure Stream Analytics, uh, some of the built-in um, uh, analytic functions and so on. We today have thousands of customers who are actually taking a big bet on Azure Stream Analytics for various mission-critical scenarios. And we have these customers come from various parts of the world, from various industry verticals, from various segments, as you can see. And one such customer who is doing some very innovative uh, things with Azure Stream Analytics happens to be Downer Industries uh, in Australia. And before I hand off to Stuart to talk about how they are using Azure Stream Analytics, let me quickly play a video that talks through what is Downer Industries. Stuart? Sometimes the world just happens. While we're happily unaware of the momentum the that's going on behind the scenes, I think we should probably be on four of them. At Downer, we're not often seen in the limelight, which is fine by us. We're focused on helping our customers make people's lives better every single day. We're a leading provider of integrated services in Australia and New Zealand. Exploring new technologies and innovative approaches. While providing our customers and the community with services that they rely on. We don't simply deliver services, we manage our customers' assets and build relationships that create success. Harnessing digital technologies to enhance our end-to-end -end service capabilities. While supporting our communities. Downer, we're looking ahead. 
doing what we do best so you can get on with life. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Stuart Trotter. I'm uh, the Software Development Manager for Downer Digital Data Services. Um, it's part of the Downer Group in Australia. And uh, hopefully what you can take away from that video is a sense of the um, diversity of services that we offer. So everything from building trains and roads to renewable energy and defense. Um, <clears throat> and what we've learned from that is there's quite a few challenges that are common across those uh, divisions within the business. Uh, the first one is that there's a, a real driver to move away from um, kind of schedule-based maintenance to, uh, to condition-based maintenance. Um, and the other one is that our customers uh, these days are a lot more discerning and are really uh, asking for uh, smarter solutions uh, from our business. Um, so with that in mind, about three years ago, my team and I started, uh, started looking at building a, a platform um, that is a, a self-service IoT big data analytics platform called Neuroverse. Um, and it's built in .NET on top of a whole heap of uh, Azure PaaS services. Um, and we've started rolling that out. Oh, we started rolling that out uh, to the business um, and tackling a few, uh, a few of these challenges. And what I want to talk to you a bit about today is what, uh, is what we're doing with Azure Stream Analytics within the platform uh, to address some of the issues in the business. Uh, two of the projects I'm going to talk about is TrainDNA and RAMS. Uh, I'm probably going to focus more on TrainDNA. Um, and TrainDNA is really about um, a solution that we've delivered to our rolling stock services division. Uh, and what they do is they build trains and then they maintain them. And they've got really long uh, contracts, like 30-year uh, contracts. And they have a real need to move to condition-based maintenance, but also to continually improve uh, on the delivery of safety and reliability for uh, their customers. Um, so what we've done initially now is we've brought on the uh, Waratah fleet in Sydney. Uh, and that fleet consists of about 80 uh, passenger trains. Um, and those trains give us about 31,000 signals per train every 10 minutes that we ingest into the, uh, into the platform. And we've also got about six years worth of history uh, that we've brought in as well. So we've got a wealth of data uh, to draw from. And to give you an example of what we're doing with uh, Stream Analytics there, uh, we have a safety use case around batteries um, that I'll describe now. So uh, trains are, have got heaps of batteries on board. And um, in Sydney, in the hotter months, they, uh, they're susceptible to a condition called thermal runaway, um, where basically there's a chemical reaction that occurs within the battery. and uh, that reaction is self-perpetuating and the battery gets hotter and hotter until it becomes a real fire hazard uh, on, the, uh, on the train. What makes it even more difficult is when you look at the data, there's a lot of false positives coming through. And so it's quite hard to actually pinpoint um, when this is a, an actual event. So what we've done with Stream Analytics and what we're able to do there is look at a six hour time window. And within that window, we're able to eliminate the, uh, the false positives that are coming in and detect the very initial signs uh, of a true uh, thermal runaway event. At that point, um, we use Azure Functions to uh, send a notification out uh, to our fleet engineers. They're able to dispatch a field technician out to the train. Uh, the guy hops on board, he isolates the battery, making the train safe. And then that battery is swapped out the next time the train goes into the maintenance yard. Uh, then we have RAMs. And, uh, what happened with RAMS is our, our contract mining business came to us and said, look, we really need a lightweight fleet management system uh, for a mine out in uh, Queensland. So they've got an open cut mine there and they want to monitor their, uh, their fleet of haul trucks and shovels. Um, so what we're doing there is we're taking about 200 signals per vehicle every second uh, into the platform and a handful of signals per tire as well uh, every 10 seconds. What that gives us is the ability to monitor not only the health of each individual uh, vehicle, but actually the performance of the fleet as a whole. So we can track you know, uh, payloads that are being loaded uh, into the haul trucks, where they're going uh, in the pit, and so on. 
uh, which has been a game changer because we can actually track all of that now in real time uh, for our customer. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the architecture. Um, so this is, uh, this is train DNA. So on the left-hand side, we've got the train itself producing about 31,000 signals, and that's being uh, collected by another downer system called MFAIS. And then we take a feed out of there into uh, our device simulation service. It does some very uh, lightweight transformations on the data before sending that up uh, to Azure IoT Hub. And then we have a suite of uh, stream analytics jobs that are consuming those messages. And they're performing a bunch of analytics, such as the, you know, the thermal runaway use case. We're monitoring airbags and the suspension. We're monitoring auxiliary power supplies, all sorts of things. Um, we're also using the geospatial queries uh, to enrich the data as well. Um, so for example, we detect when uh, a train has been sat in a maintenance yard for a while, and we flag it as being in maintenance as opposed to in operation. Uh, in addition to that, we're using a lot of time windows. Uh, one of the time windows that we're using is actually looking for the absence of data uh, for a train. So we can um, basically detect when the train has lost communication with the network, and we can get someone out to investigate. As I mentioned before, we're using Azure Functions as an output when we need to send a, a notification uh, to the engineers. Um, and very importantly for us, uh, Stream Analytics enables our Lambda architecture as well. So you can see on the right there, we're outputting to both Azure SQL Database and Azure Data Lake Store. Um, and the way that works is within the job, um, we select a subset of the signals that we require for real-time reporting. We dump those into SQL, and then we take all of the signals and we stick them into, uh, into the data lake uh, where they're partitioned. Up above, uh, we've got Service Fabric, so our whole platform is underpinned really by, uh, by Service Fabric. And in this case here, it's actually managing the data retention policies that we enforce on, uh, on our SQL databases. Uh, so the users can basically define windows of data that they want to retain uh, within SQL and we truncate the rest. And then on the far right-hand side, we've got Power BI Embedded. Uh, taking data straight out of uh, SQL for the near real-time reporting. And we're also pushing data into Azure Analysis Services uh, and providing models to our users for self-service reporting as well. And then lastly, down the bottom, uh, we've got Azure Databricks, uh, which is running our SQL jobs, uh, both scheduled and, um, and ad hoc against the data lake. All right, just a very quick one uh, on RAMs. So RAMs, the architecture is very similar, slightly, uh, slightly simpler. Uh, but on here, you can see uh, some of the signals from the truck actually go directly to the I IoT hub via a Regent uh, mesh network and a secure VPN. And then we've got our stream jobs uh, again. And again, we're making heavy use of geospatial queries. Uh, a good example in this case is we're actually suppressing alerts when they're not useful. So. If a truck has got a flat tire and it's sat in a workshop, we don't want to be sending alerts out. Okay. Um, so we'll jump into a quick, uh, a quick demo. Quite a few buttons. straight off to here. No. All right. Um, sorry, so we'll, we might get to a demo a bit later. Um, let's just talk about uh, why we chose uh, ASA in the first place. So uh, very important for us, um, is uh, it's a platform service. So we've got a very small team, um, 
And historically, we've worked a lot with, with VMs, but at this sort of scale, uh, for us to actually maintain a, a whole bunch of VMs would be uh, nigh and impossible. So we really, um, we really focus on platform services uh, to help us out. Um, ease of adoptability, uh, we've got a large user base that uh, has, a, has a lot of SQL uh, skills and background. Uh, so having a, a service that supports a SQL-like syntax is really important. Native integration, obviously, with uh, key Azure services like IoT Hub, Data Lake Store, Functions, ML um, is important. Ease of scalability. Uh, I'll talk about deploying to the edge uh, in a minute um, on the next slide. And then the last one uh, was really important for us is the data immutability because uh, we offer this feature as a, as a self-service option within the platform. Uh, but for us, time series data is immutable. So we needed uh, a service that was going to allow us to support that. And ASA does that out the box by ensuring that uh, when we're uh, outputting to SQL and Data Lake Store, uh, we can only do inserts. Okay. So, so next steps for us, um, edge analytics, we basically uh, want to start deploying stream jobs down onto the train and monitoring, uh, we want to be monitoring sub, uh, sub-second data on the train itself and raising um, those low latency notifications to uh, the driver and the guard that are, that are on the train. Um, what we also want to do with edge analytics is we have another, system, another project that's on the go uh, called TrackDNA, um, where we're, we basically we build railway lines as well and do the signaling. Um, so we want to get involved in the signaling there, but we need, it needs to be robust and highly available. So we're going to deploy to the edge. And if the site goes offline, uh, they're still getting their alerts and their analytics. Uh, train DNA, we're expanding. We're adding extra fleets this year. Uh, we've also done a, a HoloLens uh, POC there where we're actually uh, streaming live telemetry down to the HoloLens uh, through stream analytics. Um, smart facilities, we're connecting up a whole bunch of uh, mining camps um, to, the, uh, to the platform. Renewables DNA, uh, we're building one of Australia's uh, largest solar farms. Uh, and connecting that to Neuroburst as well. And then we're rolling out that RAND solution to our roads business who build Australia's roads and have a whole fleet uh, of, uh, of vehicles that they need to manage. Okay. Um, right, so in lieu of a demo, um, this is kind of a view of, uh, of the alerts um, for the Waratah fleet, so we can see the, the fleet uh, and where they are. We can uh, get a view of the statuses of each of the trains. Um, if you click the I there, you get a, an idea of all the business rules that are active that are all backed by uh, stream analytics. And then we can drill down into a specific train, have a look at the uh, alerts that have been raised, and basically scan through uh, the use case, recommended actions, that sort of thing. From there, uh, engineers can actually drill down to specific signals, and if they really want to, they can hop into a notebook and do some analysis. Um, I just wanted to show you this as well. So in Visual Studio, we can uh, monitor uh, the metrics for, um, for the jobs. Uh, we can do this in the portal as well, but it looks cooler in uh, VS. Uh, so here, we're, we're looking at inputs, output events. Uh, we're looking at the um, utilization as well. So this one's running between 30 and 40%, which is pretty, pretty good. Um, and then in Azure, uh, in the portal, we've, uh, we're looking at the same stream job here, but here we're looking at the alerts. So these alerts are monitoring those same metrics and basically telling us if, uh, if we lose our input events for a period of time, we need to send out emails, SMSs, and so on to the team. And if our um, utilization exceeds 75% for more than five minutes, um, then again, we, we need to get some alerts. So uh, that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much. So, JS is going to talk to you now a bit about um, stream analytics and big data. Thank you. Thanks, Hi, everyone. I'm Jean Sebastien Brunner. I'm a program manager for Azure Stream Analytics. And uh, I want to take a step back after these uh, great scenarios, like just to show how you can use Stream Analytics for your scenarios. So, you show the, uh, we showed the diagram before. Uh, I just have another version here or where I separate the hot pass above, hot pass analytics, where you want to have second or sub-second analytics, and the cold pass or warm pass. 
And of course, you can combine all of this uh, in your arch architecture. So let's see step by step how to build this kind of architecture for your product and make something very similar to what we saw before for trend DNA or in the demo before. Uh, so I just want to start by the stream ingestion. Uh, so stream analytics take data from event hubs, including event hubs Kafka. So you can take any device that sends Kafka data and take it to event hub and then to stream analytics. IoT hub, if you need a bad directional connection to talk back to a device, or blob storage, data lake. And we support different formats. So we support out of the box Avro, CSV, and JSON. And today we are very glad to announce now we have custom deserialization C sharp uh, that is available in preview. That means you can take any format and we, you can have a C sharp DLL or C sharp project that will open it. So think about protobuf, XML, any kind of binary format you have uh, can be open with Stream Analytics. I will show a screenshot in just one second. And I want to talk about scale as well. Uh, so because Stream Analytics is all about scale, I, I will give some number later, but uh, you can parallelize the job to, to make a very, very powerful and parallel uh, pipeline because you can scale out. And I'm happy also to announce that uh, we have automatic partitioning now out of the box with uh, uh, compatibility level 1.2. Uh, so contrary to before where you needed to do like a partition by manually, we will find automatically when there's a natural partition and partition it for you. So it's much easier to scale out. Uh, that being said, just want to show you uh, the project to create custom deserialization. Uh, you can see we have a specific project with a template uh, in Visual Studio. And the template is already documented here. And so you just have to fill your code and it's plugged directly in Stream Analytics. It will run in memory, uh, in the cloud, super efficient. So it, it used to be only available on the edge, now it runs in the cloud as well. Super efficient and can open any format. So that was step one, ingest data. So let's move to step two, enrich data. So we saw that in the demo before, when Krishna showed uh, how we can enrich the data with uh, the neighborhood from New York, the Manhattan neighborhood in WKT. But what is unique with Stream Analytics is you can take this slow moving data. It's static or it's slow moving data. It's refresh up to one, uh, one time per minute. And we actually provide full repeatability. So I have an example here. If you think about finance, like you may want to compare your transaction with the uh, currency rate. But if you want to replay the data, you want to make sure you always have the same results. Because at the time of one of the first transaction in purple here, you had the first uh, call currency rate. But later in the day, the currency rate changed. So when you replace it, this data, you want to make sure this reference data is completely version. version. And we do that automatically, automatically for you. Every result is always repeatable. We always, if you run now if, or if you run in the past, we will issue the same result. Uh, full repeatability. I want to highlight that because in terms of mission critical, this is very important. Um, and of course, this is loading in memory, so it's super fast, it doesn't slow your stream. So that was step two. Uh, once the data is enriched with uh, SQL or blob storage, then you can run the full stream processing. Uh, so we showed that, we showed that before, we showed the geospatial analytics, anomaly detection, but we have a full SQL language. And it's super efficient because of the parallel processing I, I mentioned before. But today, and just today, we announced uh, we can have 40% bigger scale, and we are talking about 13 million events per minute, about 13 gig per minute, uh, which is about yeah, 220,000 events per second. So that's uh, quite big data. Uh, think about all the scenario you can power with this data. Uh, of course, the, the exact number will depend on the complexity of the query, the exact event you have. Uh, but think about uh, all you can do is 12 million or 13 million event per minute. Uh, it's quite interesting. So 40% uh, more scale compared to before. And we'll continue at scale. We really target your uh, big data pipelines. And again, the SQL, SQL language on the left hand side, you can see like uh, if you want to do uh, Windows, uh, we just extended the group by uh, T SQL statement, and for example, here there's tumbling windows where you can have a count over 10 seconds. Very readable, three lines of code. If you compare to other programming language, uh, do a stateless query or stateless, uh, stateful, sorry, stateful function will be much more complicated. Uh, so stream processing is very, very uh, scale, scalable stream processing. And after you have two choices, so let's start by the hot path. Uh, so the hot path uh, usually can 
can pour some real-time dashboard. Uh, so we, we implement what you call uh, the streaming data set from Power BI. So that's the dashboard we showed before uh, in the demo with the taxi. Uh, so it's a push to Power BI. And basically, it's refresh uh, at the subsequent level. You don't need to have a like, kind of scheduled refresh or minute refresh. It just continues to update. Uh, we are one of the only products to actually have this uh, integ integration in this direction, this push integration. Uh, but also, you can have uh, alerts on actions. So the best way to do that is to connect to message bus, for example, uh, Azure function or event hubs. When you connect to them, you can create an alert, says an SMS, uh, a, te a text, or a mail, or trigger an action back to the device. When something is overheating, for example, you can stop the device or do something like this. So a subsequent answer, and you can also send that back to the edge if you need. Uh, so that's a hot pass. And you can connect to other, uh, through event hub to other services in Azure and close the loop, what you call a digital feedback loop. Uh, and Next step is then the call pass. So that can be done in parallel with the same jobs. Uh, and you connect to multiple outputs. Uh, here I just chose a few of them, like Blob Storage, Cosmos DB, SQL, SQL DW. So very efficient and low latency connection to this output. And you can store the data for a long time then for, uh, for reporting, uh, of, or if you go to storage, uh, block storage, you can actually train a machine learning model using Apache Spark in Azure Databricks or in Azure Insight. Um, so think about all these scenarios we showed before, uh, for example, the scenario from, uh, from the taxi of New York or train DNA where all the data is creating some alerts in the hot pass, but we are also storing years of data in the cold pass so we can train the model uh, refine the query, and when we are ready, we can deploy all this data uh, to, to the streaming analytics. Uh, so it's really two different paths, but they are all connected together uh, because this is what power the real-time alerts. Uh, this is what power actually the insights you will have, but you need data scientists or you need another team to create this insight from much more than uh, just the real-time data, like historical data, about one or two years of data. Uh, and I want to highlight again, Krishna mentioned it before, the new output to Parquet that makes this very efficient. Because Parquet is like the de facto standard for big data analytics. So by outputting Parquet, now you can have Apache Spark uh, running some super efficient query. Uh, so this is announced today in preview, and you can access uh, from today. I will give you the information in, the, in one of the next slides. So that's basically like the, the few steps to make your project using Stream Analytics and the rest of Azure projects. But we can even make that easier. So you have all these past services, but the next step is how can I actually make that in, in seconds? So in terms of ease of use, I just want to show the integration with Event Hub. Uh, so let me just switch to this PC, uh, which went to sleep. So I just want one second. Sorry, this uh, screen switching is a little slower than it should be. Uh, so. Here I'm in Event Hub, so, so that's the Event Hub that is the powering the first demo we saw with uh, uh, the taxi. Uh, so you, you, you probably recognize the Event Hub uh, portal here. We are announcing a new integration with Stream Analytics here. It's called Process Data. That is an Event Hub portal. So when you have your data flowing to the cloud, you click here, and sorry, the computer just coming from sleep, it's a little slow, and you have a few ways to uh, interact with your data, and Stream Analytics is the first one to integrate here. And in one click here, if I click on Explore, I will be able to see the data flowing in my Event Hub, that the data coming from the taxi, uh, taxi demo. Uh, so we are connecting to Event Hub right now, and this is a little slower than it should be. It's always happened in demo, sorry for that. We are fetching the data, and oh, here we go. And you can see the data is flowing. We sample some of the events, so you can see the shape of the data. You can see the schema here. You can see I didn't do anything. I just click here, one click. And after you can actually create some queries. So for example, I have this query, I can say, okay, select everything from this. And I just want to filter where, for example, uh, the distance uh, is uh, greater than two. Sorry, my keyboard is jumping everywhere. And you can interact, I create your query here. I didn't even create the stream analytics job. Test the query, and we do that on the fly on the stream of data. Uh, so this is announced today in preview. Uh, we, we are still refining uh, the speed, as you can see. Like it, it takes a few seconds, uh, but when it's productized, it's real time. It's just uh, uh, the testing is a uh, little slow. You see, like we have the data here. We filter everything greater than two, and then we can refine your query. 
And when you are ready to deploy, one more click here, you can deploy the query uh, to Stream Analytics create a job. It will run 24 seven and uh, listen to your data and react whenever the condition are met. Uh, so brand new integration today. Um, and just to summarize all the things I mentioned today, uh, so we have uh, this slide, and I need to go back to this, sorry. Uh, we have this slide sh uh, showing all the announcements you did in the last few months, but I want to focus on the one we announced today. Uh, so just to summarize, 40% uh, more scale, parquet output, uh, C-sharp custom deserialization, one-click integration is invented by just show, uh, VS code available, uh, VS Visual Studio tool are not GA, uh, we have also ASA on IoT Edge uh, uh, running on Stack. So th that's the demo we saw on the Stack Boost and uh, it's during Scott Gutier demo yesterday. And a new Windows set aggregate that's a new function uh, that is available, uh, available today. So a lot of new things like you can, as you can see. And if you want to access just a call for action, so uh, we, we have the doc here, but we have a special URL. Um, uh, oh. We don't have the right URL, but uh, so you can follow us on Twitter. We will uh, we will give all the information about uh, these new features, and so you can subscribe to all the preview we have. The demo about geospatial and taxi is on GitHub, and of course, if you want to contact the team, uh, don't hesitate to send a mail to us. So this is an email that goes to the PM team in Streamalytics. I will ha be happy to answer any question, uh, and we have a few more minutes for question here. So let me know. Uh, let me keep the slide here while we have the, the Q&A. But don't hesitate to either come to the microphone or ask your question. Go ahead. All of them. So uh, full scale is available, uh, like full cloud scale is available on the cloud. And after, if you want to do local processing with low latency, filter very private information before, you can run an IoT Edge on a stack. Yeah, so in your Lambda architecture with the hot path and the cold path, um, you're using IoT Hub in that particular example. I think there's some confusion around when IoT Hub routes should be used versus a streaming analytic job to do such routing. Can you help us understand the best practices there? Uh, that's a good question. Usually the routes are useful when you need uh, to do a stateless query. So basically a query where each event are looked at individually. But if you need to do anything that has to do with the time window, this event has uh, some, something related to another one, if you want to see what happened in the last 24 hours, that's when you, you need to use Streamalytics. So for the Lambda architecture, for the purposes of offline data storage and batch analytics or archival, it didn't seem like streaming analytics would be necessary for that use case. So I, if you have a very simple architecture where you just want to put all the events or filter them, yeah. you probably don't need streamatics. But uh, in many cases, you want to see if there's an absence of event, a pre flag, something. So dynamic evaluation understood. Oh, yeah. Okay, understood. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Hi. Hi. Uh, w when you send an event to uh, uh, the Azure function based on uh, a condition, can you see? the data that caused the event? Are you sending the whole event or are you just sending the notification itself? So it's up to you wh what kind of schema and what kind of attributes to send into Azure Functions. You can just send what is relevant for you to, just the basic information for you to trigger an alert or uh, some kind of workflow downstream, or you can send the entire tuple, so to say, so that you can uh, store it through Azure Functions in a database of your choice or um, and, and also trigger actions downstream. So you have all the control in your hand. Do you, so you specify that in the, uh, in the stream analytics portal? You specify whether to send the whole yeah. event or, okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Question, so uh, I think you may already answer this, but I didn't cut it. So uh, basically for the uh, real-time analysis and also abnormal detection, can it only happen on the edge devices? I mean, sometimes our devices or edge uh, box can be disconnected from public cloud. So uh, can the system, I mean the whole uh, process still um, happen on the edge devices or they have to be connected to the public cloud? Uh, no, it can run completely offline. So you can disconnect it. Uh, it it's, it's fully standalone. Uh, you can build some architecture that are hybrid so that it can make some analytics on the edge and on the cloud, but you can choose to run either or as well. So the only time that it needs to be connected to the cloud is as you're deploying your query, 
on the device, but after that, uh, your 100% disconnected mode uh, processing is supported. Great, great. Okay, uh, another quick question. So what's the, the relation between this uh, analysis uh, platform and the data, uh, I mean the edge uh, SQL data base we just announced? So that's a good question. So basically, uh, uh, under the cover, Azure Stream Analytics is the engine powering uh, all the, the temporal analytics for SQL Edge. So uh, Azure Stream Analytics is the engine uh, powering uh, Azure Database Edge for temporal queries. Uh, so basically, they are connected together in a very seamless way. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I have a question around the uh, when you process the data through the Stream Analytics. Do you guarantee exactly one's uh, semantics, and do you support that, or is it in preview? So we do exactly one processing, and exactly one output. It depends on the output. With Cosmos DB, for example, it's possible. Uh, with SQL, uh, we will need to, um, uh, to, to have um, an index, sorry, uh, a primary key, and it's possible as well. Uh, so I think there's only few outputs that will not uh, support that. So for example, with Event Hub, we may have duplicates, but all the storage outputs, we have a way to, to have exactly one uh, variable. If I'm trying to connect two different streams coming from Event Hub, uh, you do not have that support, but if it, the stream is coming from Cosmos DB, I can do that. Oh, I, I was talking about the output. Uh, so you can combine different stream and input, and if your output is Cosmos DB or SQL or Azure table, we can guarantee exactly once, uh, but not if it's event hub. So exactly once delivery is guaranteed based on the target, not based on the source. Yeah. So if we are writing to a Cosmos DB or a SQL or Azure table, it, there is a way for us to ensure exactly once delivery, but if we are writing to, for example, event hubs yeah. today, exactly once delivery is not guaranteed. Okay, so is there any, like, where you have listed down all the, like, the target, where oh, you yeah. have the support for exactly once? Yeah, we updated the doc recently. We realized that was a very, very common question, and it's very, uh, very recently, maybe three weeks ago, we added that in the doc. I can point you to the doc. Uh, okay, thank you. Just send us an email to ask ASA at Microsoft Azure. Any last question before we close the session? We will be outside for, for, for some more time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.